Oh, Potter Williams. Oh, apologies, apologies, my my um, my colleague. Um, I just want to continue on the um, the theme that I uh, started before, and that is on the actual objectives of the social housing reform. Um, I got up to uh, at my last call talking about the population of people who have the greatest need, as I understand it, and that is single men. And that, uh, as far as I'm aware, and uh, my colleagues can um, assist me if, the, if they're aware, as far as I'm aware, there, there appear to be no building uh, programs in place uh, by the government to address this need for uh, particularly single men who have some issues. They come with some particular concerns generally around mental uh, wellness and often with addictions um, as, a, as an added um, issue to deal with. And uh, they are, they are a, serious, um, a population of serious need that um, I have yet to see the government uh, social housing reform program adequately address that group of people. Um, so the next uh, part of 50D that I want to refer to um, is uh, 50D1C, social housing tenants are help to independence as appropriate. That's an aspirational statement, if ever there was one. Um, as appropriate is also interesting uh, that we wouldn't want all of our social housing tenants to have a level of, a, of independence. Um, but what does that actually mean on the ground? Often it means actually exiting social housing and going into private rentals. Now, while on the face of it, that sounds like um, an okay proposition for people to actually get into private rentals, we know that there are some real problems with private rentals. There's real problems with the stock, for example. Private landlords are not required to um, have their stock meet any kind of standard of um, fitness for, for um, whether that's around insulation, whether that's uh, around uh, weather tightness. So um, we, we can be potentially putting vulnerable people who require social housing into, uh, uh, into the uh, hands of some unscrupulous landlords, not all of them are like that, but when there is no requirement for them to have any standard, their, their homes at any kinds of standards, by and large, people will go to the lowest common denominator and will not provide housing of good quality standard if it's not required of them. So the next um, social housing reform objective, that there are more diverse ownership or provision of social housing. Well, we know that what's going to happen will be slightly more diverse, but not in a way that actually will meet uh, any good social outcome for people requiring social housing. Because as I have said before in speaking on this part, these, it is likely that um, PPPs will be involved or that there will be um, uh, organisations for whom the profit motive is the most uh, prime objective. And profit does not necessarily mean good social outcome. In fact, it invariably does not. It means that the objective is to make profits, not to actually meet good social outcomes, Mr Chairman. So the next objective, that there are more innovation and more responsiveness to social housing tenants and communities. And as I've already spoken, there's obviously one population that is, that is so far missing from this. More innovation and more responsiveness by having less housing stock in, control of, in state control. Those two things do not make sense to me. When uh, people are wanting to access housing, and we know that, as um, many electorate MPs and, and other MPs know, that they are uh, daily being uh, asked to, uh, for assistance to support people into um, housing, that there definitely, is, at this point in time, is not a more responsive um, more responsiveness to social housing. And how will selling off the stock actually force more responsiveness and innovation into the market. I, I cannot see this. I would like the Minister perhaps to take a call and respond to that. 
Uh, the last item of this particular group of objectives is the, the supply and affordable housing, Mr. Chair. Chair. Mr. Chair. Chris Mr. Chair. Bishop. 